Oh, man. Skip Bayless. Well, I like to call you Skip Bayluster. Man, you done made old head mad. Man, you done made me mad in a beaver when somebody just told down his damn. Don't nobody talks about Barry Sanders. No, let me tell you something. Boy, I tell you, Skip Bay Luster, you lucky old head can't fight. You lucky I can't fight because I'll be wanting to have a celebrity boxing match with you. Use your fame to make money just like you use them little black boys' fame to make money off your show. Here you is, somebody with no talent. You ain't got no talent because in the first place, you should have been covering the Detroit Lions when Barry was playing instead of the Dallas Cowboys, Emmitt Smith. Now, no shine on Emmitt Smith, but over here, I don't like Emmitt Smith football-wise. Don't know the fella personally, okay? I don't like it because back in the day, they used to always compare Barry to Emmitt. Oh, look how great Emmitt is. Emmitt ran for 2,000 yards. Emmitt ain't have the, 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 Barry didn't have the offensive line that Emmitt Smith had. If Barry had the offensive line that Emmitt Smith had, Barry's pack would probably run for 10,000 yards a year. And I ain't even both joking. 10,000 yards a year if, OG, if he had the line that doggone Emmitt had in Dallas. Man, you had, you had that, that old line that, that Emmitt had in Dallas? Man, let me tell you something. You ain't even got to put a condom on or a magnet condom on. You just take the condom, magnet condom out and just throw it to the hole, just fly right through the hole. Them big old boys, Nate Newton, them used to open them big holes up. Barry ain't have nobody. Barry had only Lomas Brown on the end. Lomas Brown did the best he can, but he did the best he can. That's about all Lomas can do. Barry Sanders will run 20 yards east and west in the backfield. 20 yards east and west backfield until he find a hole to cut up in, and then he gone. Barry may lose 20 yards a game, but then he going to make it up at the end because he's going he to run for 100-plus more all by himself. He barely ain't need nobody. How is this boy Skip Bayluster calling calling Barry Sanders overrated? I don't get this. Here's a fella, even in his sports reporting, he's been under he's he's been overrated in his sports reporting. Who gave him a show? Undisputed. Who can who can now that show is underrated? What would Skip Bayluster to be without the little black boys on his show? Y'all ever notice that? Y'all got y'all got that little black boy on his show who knows most sports about he do. I cover the Dallas Cowboys. You cover you 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 cover you cover the worst team in 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 in, in, in NFL history. They're the worst team. They're the worst team because I'm a Detroit Lions fan. We the worst team. But Detroit Bass is too. They've been the worst team in the last 20 years. They've been the worst team. I covered Dallas Cowboy. I know Jerry Jones. Ah, get out of here with that crap. Jerry Jones overrated. You overrated. I tell you what, if them black boys stop going on your show, Skip Bellies, if they stop going on your show and get their own show, Okay, because that's all that's all y'all do anyway. Y'all hire these black boy athletes to get on y'all show to speak for y'all. The black boy bring views of y'all show because y'all can't bring show. When the black boy bring views of y'all show, I be wondering myself, what the hell do the black boy need to be on their show for on YouTube to bring views to their show, but then they can't get their own show? Oh, I know, because it's easy. Mr. Charlie give them a bag, right? And they can come sit on Mr. Charlie's show and make more money for Mr. Charlie instead of grinding out on their own or using their savings account to pay their rent they play football with. But most of them probably ain't got no savings account. They probably use their money on their ex-wives and liquor buying bottles and going to strip clubs and buying 80, 50, 89 million raggly, raggly Maybach cars with lights glowing in the top. Ooh, I got the Jaguar. Look, I look at my shoe collection. I got a million dang old shoes. It's going to be a hurricane next week and the hurricane going to blow all these shoes away like the hurricane knocked down that dog old uh, uh, snake farm down there in the Everglades had all them snakes in it. That's why we got pythons and everything everywhere. Because the people collecting collecting snakes down there like they collect, like them black boys collect shoes. And then the hurricane come through and blow it all down. And then they be everywhere, watching everywhere. People walk down the street finding Nike shoes like they find Nike snakes everywhere. I'm just saying, all that stuff don't make no matter. All that stuff overrated. But Barry Sanders, Barry Sanders is not overrated. Let me tell you, boy, I tell you, boy, I wish I knew how to fight. If I would challenge skill like in the dude, I watched it one movie one time where they had this dude. This guy took he took a glove and pop pop slapped that guy. Matter of fact, I tell you what the movie was. I like that movie. They're called Dodger. 
the uh, uh, this Dodger. Well, Dodger, I can't hold here, boy, my mind go on. Uh, the uh, the Artful Dodger. That's a yeah, you check watch that movie. Uh, the Artful Dodger. That's a good movie. It's about Australia. You know how they open up their prisons in England. They sit everybody down in Australia, kind of like what everybody doing now. <laughs> Mexico and Brazil and Iran sitting, sitting all they <coughs> all they crazy people. Come through our southern border down there. <laughs> That's how they did. But yeah, he had this glove, right? This guy challenged him, challenged his arm, took the pop, pop, slapped him on the right side. I challenge you to a duel, right? <laughs> That's some crazy stuff to me. You put a bullet in the gun, you walk 10 paces and turn and shoot. Hell to the no. <laughs> I just apologize. But after, after you do a duel, but after, but after you do, after, after, after you challenge somebody to a duel, you can't back out of you can't You can't holler, uncle. You can't say, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. And here's that thing about it. If you're going to do it with somebody and you can't do, that means that your best friend, you you, you would actually say, hey, look, I don't feel like dueling today. I'm feeling my trigger finger hurt. But my, but my buddy uh, Joseph Hill, <laughs> my buddy Warren Sapp, he, he going he to fill in for me, okay? He going to shoot the bullet for me. That's how it was back in them days, you know? That way I'm glad they back in them days, boy. But I'm just saying, boy, I'm telling you, boy, if I knew how to fight, I would challenge. If I knew how to fight, Oh, I wanted fame and subscribers. I sure would. I challenge Skip Bayless to a fight. I challenge him to a duel, and we have a pay per view. And, <laughs> and no, <laughs> I won't. I won't have no fans, but I use this few of fans because I know what Skip will do. Skip will you go on his show. You get him a couple of black boys on his show, <laughs> and, and the black boys will bring views to his show. And then he'll just come in and make a little comment. Put your glasses on, Shannon. Put your glasses on. <laughs> Put your glasses on, Shannon. <laughs> Shannon. Shannon, like a little dog. Okay, okay, okay. Put my glasses on. <laughs> Skip, me, me. Skip me using all them little black boys on this show. He got a little way. <laughs> he got a little way, little monkey stuff up there. <laughs> little, that's, that's an odd little fella. He was so handsome as a little boy. Little way. He was handsome as a little boy. <laughs> now he look like a little monkey sitting up there. <laughs> all that shit in his mouth. <laughs> How can people look at little way and be like, oh, yo, look at Wait, he's so handsome. <laughs> you know what? You know I know how you do it. I'm gonna tell you. This what happens when you get old. Have you ever seen two old people walk down the street holding hands, right? <laughs> and you be saying to yourself, God dang, that's an ugly woman, <laughs> ugly old woman he got with him. And he hold her hand like it was yesterday, like he just in love, <laughs> like. Like he just in love with her. Like he can't let her go. Cause they got these two old people. What, what, they walk past my house, right? They old as I don't know what are. They way older than me, okay? But they look so happy, right? And I be looking at them, and I be saying to them, I be trying to wonder myself, he hold her head and like he don't want no golf cart to hit her. <laughs> <laughs> he on the like if a golf cart hit her <laughs> and take her from this world, he ain't soon to leave from behind, okay? And I'm thinking to myself, oh, I know it is. When you really in love with somebody or you found a bond with somebody, when you get older, it's not about sex anymore. It's about what that person used to do for you. You don't see that person as being aged and old and wrinkly. In your eyes, you see them the way that they were all those years when you were in love with them, okay? That's how it is. I don't know how, what the hell I'm talking about and how this correlates, okay? <laughs> but, uh, oh, I'm talking about Lil Wayne, right? You look at Lil Wayne and you say, we, we, women love Lil Wayne. You know, I like Lil Wayne. I don't, shit, I don't know about no damn Lil Wayne. I don't know what I see on YouTube, okay? But I'm looking at it, but I saw some pictures of him back then. He was a handsome little fella. And I look at it now. <laughs> I was saying to myself, what the hell is this here? I, <laughs> what the hell is this? But I get people look at you like, oh, the comparison of old people, people look at you like you used to be, okay? They don't, <laughs> they don't see what they see now, right? That's no I mean, they, they see in you what they used like an old man. He seen his old regular old woman and his regular woman seeing him what he used to look like, what she used to look like, and they in love with that memory. That's what's in the head. That's why they can walk and be happy with each other and grow old together. So when I look at somebody <laughs> like Lil Wayne, I was like, my God damn, what happened to the little fella? Why he just do himself like that? All that wrinkle shit in his head, <laughs> like Jay Z, walk around, <laughs> walk around there looking like they from Hades. Y'all ain't from Hades. Get out of here, okay? I can see the Haitians. 
doing that or people that are hey, I ain't telling people that are something, man. I ain't seen it because that's their culture. But come on, y'all culture appropriating, right? <laughs> Putting that coke in your head, okay? I'm looking at little here. It's kept man is having a he gonna read. He can't get no little black boy to go on this show, right? Oh, Shannon Sharp left it. Put your glasses on. Put your glasses on. <laughs> put your glasses on, nigga. Put your glasses on. <laughs> Shannon like, oh, Skip. You, uh, skip. 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 You do me like that, Skip. Oh, Skip. You do me. That's what you do, Skip. <laughs> skip tell it, nigga, put your glasses on. <laughs> Uh, say for the grass I'm, I'm, I'm going to get my own. I'm going to get Shay Shay. I'm going to get my own show. Skip, you couldn't find no little black boy that the Shannon left you to go on your show. So what you do? You go use Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne. How you let him use you like that, Lil Wayne? Now, see, that's what I'm saying. Y'all let these white folks use y'all to bring views to their channel, right? Because <laughs> y'all the content, right? They give y'all little pennies, and then they tell y'all what to say. Skip Bailey say what that? I be. They send me the script. I find the news. They send me, and everything runs through me first. And then I said, we have a meeting. We have a phone call. I don't get together in no room with these Negroes. <laughs> we do everything. We do everything on Teams. We do everything on Skype, right? <laughs> and then we come together. And, and we do the show, but everything ain't playing out. That's why all the years LeBron, Dallas and LeBron, that's all the shit you hear on this show, right? And he couldn't get nobody right. So I got to revise. I don't need Shannon Sharp. I can do this alone. <laughs> Skip Bayless have found out without Shannon, a little black boy on this show. Oh, man, ain't nobody watching that crap. He was trying to get his own little channel. He tried to get his own little Shay Shay channel, right? Ain't nobody watching that crap, man. Ain't nobody want to hear you talk about Dallas. Dallas, talk about overrated. Very overrated. What about the Cowboys? They overrated. What about your old show? Your old show overrated. Especially you got no little black boy on there. <laughs> so like, he's a like, Shannon. Oh, I gotta find so I gotta get some ratings back up. Oh, I can't get the black folks to watch me, right? Oh, and the white folks, they, they watching the Trump rally. Oh, I can't get nobody to watch me. Every time Trump make a video, oh, all the white folks, they watching the Trump videos. Oh, what can I do to get some views? The little black boys ain't watching me because they watching the little Shay Shay Sideways show. Oh, the Shay Shay Sideways show. <laughs> they watching this show. Oh, what can I do to get some views? Oh, Oh, man, Stephen A. Smith talking about me like a scolded dog. Oh, oh, what can I do? Oh, I'm about to go. What, 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 what is wife name? Peggy Sue. Oh, Peggy Sue. <laughs> Peggy Sue. Ain't nobody watching my overrated show because I ain't got no little black boy. His wife was like, well, 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 Skip, if you had to talk like Shannon like that, maybe you had a little, oh, Peggy Sue, get out of here. You take the little nigga boy aside. <laughs> You take a little nigga boy side. Get out of here, Sabalu. Leave me alone. I got to find a way to get my show back revived. Oh, wait a minute. What do I hear? Every ride I run around town, bling, 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 bling. That's <laughs> what Oh, that's it. Every time I go around here, singing, bling, bling, picky ring, ring, and my bling, bling. Oh, that's it. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot now. Here's the thing. I forgot. Lou Wayne and my best friend. <laughs> Everybody love Lil Wayne, <laughs> right? Baby, I, and Wayne, he knows sports, right? <laughs> he ain't got no job. He just sit around, smoke weed, look at sports all day, and, <laughs> and watch his blood pressure from diabetes and them sick cells. Okay, i call Lil Wayne, okay? Hey, Lil Wayne, I need some help. Uh, me and my wife, Peggy Sue, we gonna be on your front door at 64. He go to Lil Wayne's house. Lil Wayne, you know sports. I need <laughs> I need the black folks again because the white folks ain't watching my show. They watching the Donald Trump rally. <laughs> Donald Trump gonna be in Kansas City at the Kemper Arena, right? They gonna be video, right? So anybody watching my show, right? They all pay attention to Trump. All the good Lily white folks, they pay attention to Trump. They ain't watching my show. Oh, little way. <laughs> I need a minstrel show. <laughs> I need I need you to bring your clown. I'm sorry, Lil Wayne. I need you to bring your uh, your cachet to my show to give me some credence. You know, we best friends. I ain't talked to you the last 45 years. It says bling bling every time I'm I ain't talked to you since bling bling. <laughs> I need you now. Okay, don't worry about it. 
We'll cut you a check, okay? Cause Lil Wayne ain't doing shit for free, okay? We gonna cut you a check. That money at Bird Pay, they pay you Lil Wayne, okay? We gonna subsidize that check, and I want you to put a sweater on <laughs> and tie your hair up, <laughs> okay? <laughs> tie that nappy shit up, okay? And you put a <laughs> you put a, a ascot on, what they call it, little tie shirt, and you call my show Lil Wayne, and you and you just say some. Free words like, I like football. <laughs> Did you see him throw the ball? <laughs> Y'all be watching that shit. Obviously, you just watch the game. Now you listen to people tell you about the game. You just watch. Yep. I know all about football. Yeah. <laughs> they got the, to the tell the problem with the stat sheet. Yeah. And <laughs> what they say? And Josie Bob, he ran 45 yards. He was a good player back in the day. <laughs> What the hell you get out of that? Contour that content. What the hell he be talking about? Yep. And he was 45 yards ahead of time. All the way to Hey, Lil Wayne, do our do me a new rap song. And they play. <laughs> we Kim Bayless. Kim Bayless be using these little nigga boy. <laughs> oh, it's like a bug. <laughs> <coughs> That's why I was so happy to see Shadish. I was so happy to see Richard Sherman and Keyshawn Johnson get their whole show, their old show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all get that Skip Bayless money while he giving it out, okay? But y'all got your own, y'all did like shit. See, see y'all, Shannon Sharp a smart dude. I'm talking about Shannon. Shannon's a smart dude. Shannon had his backup plan in the hole, right? Now everybody want to get their own little pod talks now. Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, but I think it's good, though. I, I think Allen Iverson, I think I, I, if, I, if Allen Iverson, if, if he get a pod talk, he get a pod, I think it'll do good because he learned how to talk now. He can put words together now. That makes sense, okay? Hey, Ale, it ain't me, brother. I ain't talking to y'all. I'm just saying. See, I'm looking at I'm, I'm just saying, okay? I, I think Alan Harrison need a, need a part, so I think that thing will do really good because, I mean, hey, I know some stuff, okay? I'm glad he's Richard Sherman to get their own show, right? They're going to get that little Skip, Skip Bayless money right now. Michael Irvin, you know, <laughs> you know, he just needs to stay away from the white women. <laughs> white women, Michael Irvin. Get your own show. Get your own Michael Irvin. What you do is <laughs> you you get you a four-by-four four, uh, pool bar and set it in back of your property, and you do your podcast with that Michael Irvin. We don't want you to end it. You know, you we don't, we don't want you around no white women, okay? You can't be like your boy, Coach Prime. You can't be like that little white girl who rubbed behind him, rubbed his toes, okay? She be happy, happy, <laughs> happy. You you can't be like, oh, bro, you can't get you no white girl. Because you, you get around white women, <laughs> you like an allegation magnet, okay? So, my girl, wherever you get you a little pot talk, you get you a little pool bar, and you do your little pot. Y'all get away from Skip Bayless. He, he don't like black people. <laughs> like Kanye West say about Bush. Bush don't like black people. He let them all them niggas flood in the water down there. You know what? I, I, I shouldn't make no joke about that because I just listened to a podcast on uh, Hurricane Katrina. And a lot of things is not being reported. So I apologize for making a joke about that because I just listened to that podcast. There's a lot of things on that. A lot, a lot, a lot of things. And I went, I went from how the levees was first, because how New Orleans was first built, how the levees was, was constructed, what failed, how it failed, the pumps, everything, and how many people died. The Superdome, you know, how many, the horrific things, the convention center, the horrific things that was happening. Let me tell you something. If you actually knew, y'all actually knew the seriousness of what was going down there, it was probably worse than a third world country at that time. Okay, people really suffered. So I'm, I'm apologizing for myself for even, you know, slightly making a joke about that. Okay, that was a serious horrific, and I've been studying that. Okay, all right. Now, I apologize for that. Back to the boondocking, okay? All right. <clears throat> okay. Now, Skip Bayless, what would your show be if you didn't have the little black boy sitting up there uh, to bring views of your channel? And the one thing I do like about your channel now, 
I like that Michael Irvin is more balanced now. He don't get so excited like he used to anymore. Okay, somebody must have told him, say, hey, Mike, you got to tone it down a little bit. You got to be more level. You can't, I'm going to, I'm going to, you can't get, you got to tone it down. So Mike is trying, and you can see when Michael Irvin talking, he like fighting it, right? He fighting to keep control. He's fighting to keep online. Stick to the script. My lines, my lines. <laughs> like that camel. My lines, my lines. Stick to the script, Mike. Stay level. Don't go off script, Mike. When Mike go off script, oh, it's a wrap, okay? He gets erratic. He be everywhere, okay? But Mike been, Mike been in training, so when I see Mike with Keyshawn on Keyshawn's show sometimes. You know, I like that. Like I say, I cloud everything. I don't mean no harm to look. I don't want no smoke from nobody, right? I can't afford no smoke from nobody, right? I'm just talking about what I see. I have it for her, okay? That's it, okay? <laughs> That's all I know. But Skip, don't talk about Barry Sanders, right? Do not, especially use the word overrated with Barry Sanders. I, can't, I don't even know. How would you even fix your mouth to say Barry Sanders is overrated? That's the thing that trips me out. I wonder, how can this cool, how can this cool, no, 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 he ain't no cool. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, Skip. I can't be calling people names. YouTube don't like that. That called bullying. I apologize, YouTube, for calling him a raccoon because raccoons don't look like him. Okay, he he more he more of a possum type. <laughs> not a, he more of a possum brand. Yeah, not a raccoon. Okay, all right. Okay, but Barry is one of the greatest running backs ever. Barry was smart, retired after 10 years, because <laughs> he last wasn't going nowhere. Barry wasn't going to end up walking like Shadur at the end of his career, walking sideways like a pe- like a penguin, okay? He wasn't going to be like Shadur, right? Because Shadur was going to take a hit this year, right? And he's going to go into penguin mode again, because hey, ain't nobody going to block for him. He may have the big boys up front, but... They ain't got the coaching to put the young fellas in the right position. Now maybe in a few years, if they get some, some, uh, some, uh, what they call it, some synergy between the coaches. But you can't build synergy between. You takes more than players, okay? It takes more than players. But I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about Shadur. Or I'm talking about Barry Sanders and <coughs> and Skip Bayless right now. Skip. Your show is overrated. Your show wouldn't be anything without them little black boys be on your show. When have you ever went out and got a, a white co-host to sit opposite of you, right? You, you have it and you won't because you know no one will watch your show unless it's not a Trump rally going on, okay? If a Trump rally is going on, you know you ain't getting no views, okay? All right? Because ain't nobody at Biden's rally, right? Biden do rallies, Biden, Biden do rallies in his basement. Nobody, nobody be at Biden's rally. If all the good lily white folks, they be at the Trump rally. The people, the lily white folks who think like you think, okay? They be at the Trump rallies, okay? They don't watch your show. But, you know, since Biden don't do <laughs> any rallies, the black folks ain't got no rallies to go to. So they watch the smoke shows, right? So that's why you got you got to do all, pull these gigs, pull these gimmicks out, you know, paying Lil Wayne <laughs> to bring his audience. <laughs> he probably know more about sports. Let me tell you something. I probably know more about sports than he do. <laughs> I've been living a whole lot longer, watching a whole lot for longer too, okay? But but we know he brings a crowd. So you use Lil Wayne, and I know Lil Wayne got paid for because Lil Wayne ain't no fool. <laughs> he done got screwed by Bourbon. Well, oh, God, I can't say that. I can't use the word screw with Lil Wayne. <laughs> oh, I can't say that. Oh, I was about to say. <laughs> Oh, my God, he got screwed all his money with Birdman. But screwed is a bad word for a little man. <laughs> for a little way to Birdman. Uh, I don't know. I was just going to say he got finessed out his money, okay? I won't use the word screwed. Because every time I say that, it reminds me of them kissing. Oh, oh God, little man. <laughs> but he was a little younger then. He could have been under the coat spell. <laughs> Birdman, I don't know. But 
Now, why, Skip, you need these little fellas. You need these, these black folks to come in there to give you some ratingness, you know, some, some, some substance. Because none of your shows by yourself, you have substance, okay? And then you use Lil Wayne, and you can't get nobody, and, but you finally land on Keyshawn, because Keyshawn got fired. <laughs> Keyshawn got fired for another show. So Keyshawn landed on show. He had nowhere to go. Michael Irvin ain't had nowhere to go. The white folk, he took the white people money, and they still have the Michael Irvin for their money, okay? Mike, <laughs> you better build that pool bar and back your property in Florida down there. Just make sure that it's structured real good because you know every year we're going to get some hurricanes down that way, okay? And, <laughs> okay. And do your podcast from your own little pool bar. Make sure ain't no white women around, okay, Mike? Don't even have no white women pictures on your wall, okay, Mike? None of that stuff, Mike. Because them white folks after you for that money that you took from them out of Arizona, okay? Mike couldn't get a job, okay? And they know that the black folks still love Mike, so that's why... Skip high, Mike. Richard Sherman. I like Richard Sherman. I don't know what Richard Sherman had some problems, right? <laughs> when he beat up his in-laws, <laughs> he ran across the Golden Gate Bridge to his in-laws, his in-laws' house. <laughs> Richard, what was you on, Richard? <laughs> Richard Sherman. I don't know, Don. They're just only I know Richard. What they say? They say you was high as Georgia Cotton. <laughs> They say Richard Sherman ran across the Golden Bridge <laughs> from Oakland to his in-laws house and kicked the door in and went there and hugged his father-in-law out. <laughs> hugged his father-in-law out. Oh, Richard. So Richard had some problems, right? Richard, <laughs> they, them, they, Richard, <laughs> and what did Richard do? Richard do what all good black folk do when they have problems, right? They go to the black church and they say, I'm gonna just obey it. <laughs> I, I see it. I see it. I have some problems. He who was about to say, let him cast the first rock. And everything is forgiven with niggas. <laughs> so, my concern, Michael uh, Sherman, Richard Sherman made that apology. He said, I had some problems. Yeah, I had some problems with things that I was dealing with, and I'm just a man. Y'all forgive me. And uh, he who would not say, let him cast the first stone. <laughs> okay. And that's like I say, niggas, niggas, everybody shut up, niggas. I, got, I know I got some demons, so <laughs> I don't want to see any stones <laughs> around here. So, my God, oh, so <clears throat> Richard Sherman, he had his issues, okay? It's okay without well, him being a 49ers fan, and they just beat, they just beat, uh, uh, they just beat my Detroit line. That's all right, because he wasn't a 49 er that long. I don't know what kind of visit he had the 49 er She you played with the Seahawks. <laughs> you probably played for that one, two years, but that's okay. <laughs> I like actually Richard Sherman. He's smart. He went to Sanford. I, I like Richard. Dude, <laughs> I do. I like. Him. And let me tell you something. I don't know if y'all knew this, but like, I like uh, uh, a skip. Barry Sanders, I'm going to show you how smart Barry Sanders is. Okay. Barry Sanders Jr., okay, played, he could have, I don't know why he didn't stay in Oklahoma State. Okay. He was a good running back, his son, darn good running back, had moves like his daddy. All right. Where he made his, his mistake was he transferred to Stanford. When he transferred to Stanford, Barry Sanders Jr. got stuck behind who? You want to, you, <laughs> you need a lifeline? I <laughs> skip. <laughs> you want to call little, you want to call little, little Wayne as a lifeline? Do, 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 do. Come on, Skip Bayless. This is a question for you. You know everything, Skip Bayless. Old head just gave you a question. Barry Sanders Jr., right? Who did he get stuck behind when he transferred at Sanford? The reason why he's not in the NFL, because he couldn't get no shot. Come on, Skip. <laughs> I don't want you to call Richard Sherman, because Richard Sherman, no, okay? He is he, he, he from Sanford. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what Michael Irvin was going through at that time, but you might can't call Irvin. <laughs> you might call Keyshawn. Keyshawn probably no, but call Lil Wayne. Okay, I'll give you a lifeline. Okay, I'm going to tell you. Barry Sanders Jr. got stuck behind McCaffrey. That boy in the 49ers, that bad Christian McCaffrey. Barry Sanders' son, in hindsight, 
should have stayed in Oklahoma, but he's a smart kid, okay? And his dad, Barry Sanders Sr., know about football. He wasn't keen. He wasn't hype about having his son follow his footsteps in the NFL because he wanted his son to live a long, healthy life. And he saw how intelligent that young man was. But when he went to Sanford, he couldn't get on the field because of Christian McCaffrey. Okay? That's why he couldn't get on the field. But the times when he did get on the field, the young man did pretty good. But the father, his Barry wanted him to go follow his passion. And I think he does computer programming for games and stuff like that. But he's a very smart young man. Barry sat his son. Sometimes it's not all about football. Okay, all right. Skip Bayluster is not all about football sometimes, okay? Barry, now Barry has a younger son. He plays at Michigan State basketball. I haven't got into that young man yet so far, his career. But Barry has all, I've met Barry personally. I met Barry in Gold's Gym in, uh, in Roch, in, uh, was it Rochester? No, it was Arbor, no, it went to Arbor Hills because it wasn't across the road, it wasn't across Updike. It was across Updike at Gold's Gym. Barry looked at me at that time. He, he thought I played football. I said, no, I don't play football. <laughs> I met Barry in that good. I met, met um, uh, Bob Prober. Bob Prober was was uh, was uh, enforcer for the Detroit Red Wing. I met both of them. They thought I played football. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, no, I couldn't fight like Bob Prober, and I couldn't run like Barry. No, I'm just a fan. <laughs> okay, but... Both of them was great personal people. They went like your Coach Prime. When they met you, they was authentic. They greet you. You didn't have to be somebody for them to show their teeth and meet you and act like they like you. If they saw you, if Barry seen you in the elevator or Bob Prober seen you in the elevator, they would speak to you. They would talk to you. Okay? These are these people. I know Barry character from what I experienced being around Barry and not just that being downtown Pontiac at the club, okay? When Herman Moore and them came in a few times when Barry came out, his mannerism, Barry was a quiet young man, okay? He was a quiet young man like he is now. He just forced out with the media to talk a little bit more than he would normally want to. But Barry was about his business. There was nothing overrated about Barry, nothing overrated about his character, okay? I bet you right now, if you knew Coach Prime and Coach Prime didn't know you and y'all was in a, y'all, you saw him and you walked up to him, I bet he'll treat you like an asshole. See, that's that fate that I used to see in my Aunt Tay. That's the character of a person. The character of a person is how that person is without the lights are shining. I know how Barry is. From, I know from my experience of meeting Barry a few, a few times personal smile. He's not going to say a whole lot of words. He's not going to sit there and have no conversation with you, but he's going to acknowledge you. And when Barry played football, Barry was about his business. Was not nothing overrated? Barry sacrificed for that Detroit Lions team. Sacrifice. And he got to the point that I remember, I remember when they fired one thing that I think that Barry was upset about that caused him to retire. He was upset about Wayne Fox when they fired Wayne Fox. Barry loved Wayne Fox. They brought in the um, the coach, I think he played, I think he was the coach of the San Diego Chargers at the time. I want to say Air, Air Parcells, I think. His name. They brought in the coach for San Diego Chargers. Okay, he, he coached Kevin Winslow and, and all them boys there, right? They, he brought that coach in. And that coach, I remember that coach, it was reported that he told Barry that he didn't like the way Barry run, that Barry didn't hit the holes. And that paid Barry mad because there wasn't no hole to hit. How can you hit a hole? He ran 20 yards in the backfield because there wasn't no hole. He ran around the ends because Lomas Brown was the only one that, 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 were, that were pulling for him. So this guy comes in after all these years watching Barry want to change the way Barry run. And also the direction that the team was going, the team was going in, it wouldn't have been healthy for him as a running back because he didn't have what he need. But you look on the other hand, 
Skip Bay Luster, when you was covering these Dallas Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys had one of the biggest offensive lines in the, in, in the, in the NFL. Dallas Cowboys were stacked. Okay, they had a great quarterback in Troy Aikman. They had they, they, they had another run they had another running back back there with Emmitt Smith. Okay, a, a big white boy. Who couldn't run behind that line? Who couldn't cover the Dallas Cowboys back then? That team was stacked. So what I'm telling you is that you call him very overrated, but Emmitt had more protection, had more weapons. You had Michael Irvin them the wide receivers. You can spread the ball out. You spread the ball out to Michael Irvin them, and you got this big offensive line. Emmitt can run for days without being touched. Barry couldn't do that. Yeah, you had you you had Herman Moore and you had uh what's his name? Parker Parker, I can think of the other wide receiver that we had. And you had a decent uh, okay quarterback. But you had an offensive line that wasn't that strong. I said, get yourself a Lomas Brown. So what so how is Barry overrated? Put Barry behind Dallas. Take Emmett Smith, put Emmett Smith behind Barry Sanders line, and put Barry behind Emmett line. And let's see then. Barry, I would guarantee you Barry run for 300 yards every game easily because it only takes Barry one carry to get 80 yards. That's all it takes Barry. So if the <laughs> Cowboys open up a hole, Barry gone for 80 yards or 100 yards or 60 yards. So Barry only need five carries to make 300 yards behind Dallas line. Put Emmett behind Detroit line at that time. Emmett was a straight ahead runner. He wasn't a side to side runner. Emmett gonna hit the hole because the hole is there. Emmett wasn't fast from quarter to quarter. To play for the Detroit Lions, like Barry did, you would have to know how to hit them ends. You can't run because there's nothing up to Emmett to run. Emmett probably would have would have retired. He probably would have had maybe what four year, three year career uh, career behind the Detroit Lions uh, offensive line. So. St- just stop, Skip Bayless. I know you're only saying this because you know the attention that it's going to get. I know. It's all about clicks. You ain't that stupid. You ain't that dumb. You are very calculating, okay? We all know that. And you got just what you wanted. I see you got other people talking about you. I'm talking about you because I don't like nobody talking about Barry Sad, especially calling Barry Sad overrated. He's a Detroit Lion, and he's never been overrated. And like I say, anytime you want to have a celebrity boxing match, okay, I'm gonna get somebody to stand in. <laughs> I'm gonna get somebody to stand in for me, okay? Like they do them dudes. <laughs> oh, right, look, I can't do. <laughs> I get, but you can't call them dudes off. You can't say sorry. I get somebody else to box for me, okay? I will find somebody else. I do like you, Skip. I will find me another little black boy, right, <laughs> to, to, to to bring in some money for me, okay? Okay, but I'm just saying, Skip. I know what you're doing, and you got what you wanted. But oh, oh, here, guys, and look, you got to worry about me, Skip. Ain't nobody gonna listen to this old stupid pod talk anyway. Ain't nobody listen to this to my little stupid goofy stuff. But I got to speak my speech because YouTube say I can have a chat. <laughs> I can have a chat, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. Like Coach Prime told them coaches, keep <laughs> keep Barry name out your mouth. <laughs> Skip. Keep Barry Sanders' name out your mouth, Skip. <laughs> I will give you the three-finger back here. <laughs> the back here, okay? Ooh.